Hello and welcome to Frank Stiano Explains and to the Algorithms course at the University of Cambridge. In this video we're going to explore one more amazing property of the binary heap. Inserting one element into a heap of size n costs log n. And so you would be excused for thinking that inserting n items will cost n log n. But interestingly, the heap allows us to do that even more cheaply than that. If you wanted to insert a new item into a heap, what would you do? In order to preserve the almost full binary tree shape, you would be forced to insert it the only possible place, which is at the end. And then maybe at the end, it's bigger than its parent. And so if it is bigger than its parent, it would have to exchange with its parent. And if it is still bigger than its new parent, it would have to exchange with that until it reaches a place where the parent, uh, where it's not exceeding its parent. So it's a similar process to that of making the new root fit where it belongs, except from the bottom, the new, new entry fit where it belongs going upwards. It's still something that can only go up by one, even more so because there's no branching. There's only one parent instead of having two children. Uh, and so it's still gonna, going to be bounded by the height of the tree. So it's still going to be maximum log n, log n cost for inserting a new item. And so since I have n items in the array that's unsorted, I could always build a heap of them um, in n log n operations. Plus n log n for unwinding it and doing that still the asymptotic cost remains n log n and everything, everybody's happy. Uh, except where are you actually building this heap? So, mm, yes. Everything uh, slightly suspicious, but the interesting thing about heap, one more interesting thing about the heap is that uh, you can build a heap out of an array of rubbish in place uh, at a cost that is even less than n log n. That's interesting. So uh, what do you do? Let me, um, let me see. Uh, if, you, if you have your, if you have your heap like this. Uh, and you stick things into it. Okay, someone wants to give me small integer numbers, please? Zero. Zero, okay, where do you want it, here? Another number, please? Two. Two, another number? Two. Two, another number? Two. Two, another number? <laughs> Popular, two, here. Seven. Seven. Any more? Three first. Three first, then six. Three first, then six, okay. Um, so if I have these numbers in here, and that's clearly not a heap because this uh, poor zero uh, is, uh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is clearly not a uh, max heap, but I can make myself a max heap in the following way. If I start from the bottom, then I say my strategy is going to be to always make the things I encounter Roots of max heaps. So I first look at this. Is this the root of a max heap? Yes, it has no children, so the children cannot do any damage by being bigger than the parent because there are no children. So this one's fine, this one's fine, this one's fine, this one's also fine. This one starts having children. So children are always trouble, well, I can tell you, uh, being a dad. Uh, what do you see here? Uh, you see two children, they're both causing trouble. They're both bigger than two. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to take the bigger of the two and promote it to be the parent instead of this. So if it was bigger than the other sibling, then clearly the other sibling is still dominated by it, so there's no trouble going to be caused here. Even if this were a big heap with thousands of elements, uh, once I promoted it to a big brother up here, then this is gonna be a heap that's fine where it was. And the two has been uh, demoted down here because uh, the six was bigger and um, I may have to continue going down with this two until I reach the bottom of this in the worst case. If this was the smallest thing of all this heap that I had here, it's not enough just to stick it here. It may have to continue going down. That's uh, a price I have to pay, which is as 
uh, big as the height of the subtree, the subheap that I was fixing it in. But in this case, the height was uh, stopped here, so there's nothing else I need to do. And so on. This one is another one that had children, so I have to uh, do the same operation for this one. And this two stops here because there's nothing else, but it might have to go further down. And then the next one with children is this one, and I have to take the seven. And this is a case where you see it doesn't stop here because it has two more children, uh, and so it should keep going there the same. So it doesn't matter which one I choose, but it has to be here. And because they're the same, uh, then it doesn't matter which one's there. They're both uh, equally happy. So now, with this operation, I have reformed uh, the heap. How much does this whole operation cost? Well, clearly, each one of these uh, fixing the root that's been demoted costs no more than the height. Uh, and the height is bounded by the height of the whole tree, so it's clearly bounded by log n. And there's only n of this thing, so it's still bounded by n log n. Well, it's the same bound that it has before. Have I improved on anything? No, I haven't, but it's just because my analysis has been too loose and too general. It's not tight enough to actually give me the real bound. Uh, if I look at things more carefully, this tree, because it's a binary tree, every time, uh, every time I go to a new level, the new level has uh, as many nodes, in fact, has more nodes than there are in the rest of the tree. So this level has four nodes, and the rest of the tree only had three nodes. If I make another level, this will have eight nodes, and there's not even eight nodes in here, there's only seven. I make another level, 16, and so on. Every new level has more nodes than there were in the whole tree before it. So actually, when I look at the heights of these trees that I need to fix, most of the heights, because most of the tree is at the bottom of the tree, most of the heights are much smaller than the height of the whole tree. There's only a few of them that are tall. Most of them are short. So I would like to do a more accurate computation of how much this costs, because I hope that if I accurately count all the heights without uh, bounding all of them with a big height, uh, I might see that it costs less than n log n, which indeed uh, it does. So let me try uh, to cost, let me do this. Let me try to cost things, and this is something that uh, uh, you will find. Where will you find this? You will find this uh, uh, between page, well, on page 46 is what I'm about to do. So you have this, this uh, tree, which is going to contain things in an almost full shape. Let's pretend it's actually full, just for the sake of having round numbers with the powers of two. I have here a table in the middle of this page 46, which has level. So uh, my first thing is the level. And level. So this is level 0, level 1 level 2, some level 3, level, call it uh, uh, J. Uh, and if the height of the tree is H, then the bottom level is going to be called H. So uh, what do I have in this table? How many nodes are there in this level? Okay, number of nodes in level. There's only one here. There's two at this other level. There's four at this level. There's eight at this level. I keep doubling it, and uh, you see that it's always uh, two to the power of the level. So two to the h nodes in the bottom level. Then the height uh, of the tree, the, well, the height of a node at this level at this level. So the height is 0 here, uh, and it's uh, h minus j here uh, is going to be 
h minus 3, h minus 2, h minus 1, h is the height uh, of a tree uh, rooted at this level. Uh, the maximum cost of fixing up a node that is in this level, so if I have this node, and uh, I need to fix up its root because I just um, notice that it doesn't comply uh, because it's smaller than its children, then I have to send it down. Maybe it stops here, but if I'm unlucky, it's, it's fine. If I'm, if I'm lucky, it's fine. If I'm unlucky, it has to go down all the way. So the cost of doing that is going to be proportional to the height uh, of, the, uh, of the root that I'm trying to fix. So cost of fixing... the root at this level is going to be uh, some constant times the height. So k h k h minus 1, blah, 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 k h minus j. The cost of doing that for all the nodes in that level is going to be the product of this times this, this cost of doing for all of them in the level, and the cost of doing for all the nodes in the tree is going to be this product summed across all the levels. So the cost of doing it uh, over the whole tree sum uh, for uh, the level I called it j 0 to h uh, of 2 to the j k h minus j. Okay, so that's the cost of turning all my um, messy array into a heap. Because you know, I draw it as a tree, but I view it as an array. I would work on it just as an array without any other uh, extra structures or pointers. And looking at parents and children with the formula that we saw before. So that's the cost uh, of building a heap out of that as a function of the size of the array. Where's the size in this equation? Which of the letters I have in here represents the size of the array? Well, the size of the array is the size of the tree. The size of the tree it depends on the height of the tree. Uh, the height of the tree is h. Uh, and the number of nodes in the tree, if it were completely full, would be 2 to the h. And if it's not completely full, but almost full, then it's bounded by 2 to the h. And so it's actually h that represents the size of the tree, uh, but the actual size is 2 to the h. So uh, this is a cost as a function of h is equal to this. So... Um, this is actually the equation we have here. C of h is j from 0 to h, 2 to j, k, h minus j. What do I do in here? I do a, a little bit of uh, basic maths tricks to extract the part I really want. The part I really want. So this, uh, if I multiply and divide by 2 to the h, why would I do that? This uh, 2 to the h is not uh, a function of j, so I can actually... Uh, stick it out, sum 2 to the h, uh, and it could be here under this, but I'm going to put it under that, even though in the context of this summation over j, it's a constant. The k is also constant. I'm going to stick it out. And then I have this h minus j here. So I've done this trick so that this is a uh, this is 2 to the j minus h, so or 2 to the minus uh, h minus j, uh, or 1 half to the h minus j. And so that 1 half uh, h minus j times h minus j 
which I already had in here, uh, then the summation, and then out of there I have this k and 2 to the h uh, sum over j. This is something that if I were to call this um, this thing here another name, and this thing here another name, looks like something that you study in kindergarten uh, when you're that keen on uh, uh, series and summations and all that stuff, uh, which told you, let's make some more space, there's a formula that uh, if you're still proficient in that you can derive, uh, and otherwise you can look it up in your old textbook, which says the series for i from 0 to infinity, that's a series, of i x to the i is equal to some fraction. And to be honest, I don't even care what's in the fraction, but I'm going to copy it anyway. Uh, 1 minus x square. Uh, this is provided that uh, that x is uh, less than 1. Uh, if x uh, in absolute value is less than 1, then this series converges to this fraction. And the interesting thing here is that this fraction is a finite value. So the series is bounded by a constant. And so if the series is bounded by a constant, in this case, this is uh, a summation which is finite, it's not a series, it's from 0 to h, uh, and in this case the base is positive, the 1 and 1 half is a positive thing, so all these things raised to any integer power, uh, all these things are positive terms. Uh, if the series that I would obtain by having x 1 half uh, going to infinity uh, is bounded by a constant, then clearly the uh, summation itself is bounded by the same constant. And so this means that in this formula that I had uh, derived, I, I make, a, make a mess of this board because there's not so much space with the thickness of pen I have. But it's written more cleanly in your um, handout. So this formula, this part of the summation that looks like a very complicated thing is actually just bounded by a constant, so I can totally ignore it. Uh, this thing can just be subsumed into this, and so the cost of h is basically bounded big O of uh, 2 to the h. So because h uh, is bounded by 2 to the h, uh, h was uh, the height of the tree, so it was the log of the n. So the cost as a function of n so if this is uh, 2 to the n, then is going to be linear, right? So this is c of c of log n is 2 to the no. Um, I put the log in the wrong place. c of n is 2 to the uh, log n, which is equal to n. Uh, there should be a theta in front of this, and a theta in front of this. All right. So this uh, tells me that my um, cost of forming a heap from uh, an, an unsorted array is only linear. And I can do all that in place. And if I sum all this together, it means heap sort beats everything else. Uh, and yet, uh, next time we are going to see something that on some occasions does even better than heap sort. Thank you. <laughs>